Hey folks, it's Florida Deer. This is the last of three videos that I'm doing comparing gas and diesel lawn and garden tractors. And in this video I'm going to compare three sets of John Deere tractors from the past. I'm staying away from the current ones. And I'm going to do the breakdown of the initial costs of these tractors as well as the fuel costs over time for these tractors and any savings and what the recapture rate is and I might touch on maintenance a little bit but this is going to be a very general comparison we're not going to dive too down deep into the rabbit's hole of different things with maintenance and filters and all that kind of stuff so stay tuned here's the uh, three sets of tractors that I'm going to compare and I'll get into those right now so the main thing we're comparing here is fuel types between these two tractors so this was a day in April in 2021 in Florida where the diesel price was basically 290 and the ethanol free gasoline was 346. If you don't use ethanol free, then certainly you're allowed to do that. And the fuel cost would be different, but in all my lawn and garden equipment, I always use ethanol free gasoline. So that's why I made this comparison. Uh, I do treat the diesel and I generally don't treat my gas engines except for on rare occasions so there's probably a, another about five cents that I would throw in there and um, the other thing we're not really going to factor in is the oil types which is actually pretty similarly priced uh, as well as filters and radiator fluid if one is air cooled or liquid cooled so those are considerations that you can also make that are worth doing so I just wanted to make that disclosure here. So the first two tractors I'm comparing are the John Deere 445 and 455. These are being compared because they are the same tractor with a different engine. So for those of you with a 425, I apologize. The 425 in my opinion, and I've had one as you can see right here on the left. That's mine, all wheel steer. It was a great tractor, but it's an entry-level tractor compared to the other two. It has a less substantial seat. There are a couple other minor things. It has a lower horsepower engine, lower horsepower PTO, I believe, and a couple other factors that make it not the same as the other two. So I'm comparing the other two because they are basically exactly the same tractor, but with different engines. Let's do the quick breakdown on the 445. It was basically just under $9,800 brand new. Had an electronic fuel injection, 22 horsepower Kawasaki V-Twin. And I might say it was one of the smallest engines that John Deere ever put in a tractor this size at only 617 cc. So it puts out quite a bit of power for the size, for the small size that it was. And, but it was a thirsty engine, as we'll get into that in just a moment. And the next tractor, of course, is a cult favorite, the 455, with a price tag of just under $11,000. Indirect injection diesel, also 22 horsepower, 883cc, Yanmar inline three cylinder. Um, very powerful engine, very strong engine. But out of the diesels that are compared in this comparison, it ended up being sort of the thirstiest of the, I guess, uh, three that were compared in this uh, video. So we'll get into that right now. So these fuel consumption figures were lifted years ago by me from a My Tractor Forum thread. But they were originally apparently from a week in freedommachines.com thread as that's what it says at the top of this paper that I'm reading right now and these particular consumption figures are at full load so if it's one half load it's going to be quite a bit differently with each of the tractors but this is at full load and I figured I would do full load because why not I mean if you're mowing your lawn then that's generally what you're going to be running the tractor at to establish the full PTO speed. Uh, certainly you could run the tractor at less RPMs if you're doing other things, but that's what I went with just to be consistent here, since a lot of us will end up mowing with these tractors at the very least. 
if, if nothing else. Now the issue with this particular comparison was that even though the 455 was only $1,200 more than the 445, because the fuel consumption is so similar between the two, the recapture rate for buying a 455 is six and a half years. So it'll take you about six and a half years until you recoup the cost, the initial cost of the diesel if you buy a 455 versus a 445. And I didn't get the figure for the 425, but again, you could certainly buy the 425 for even cheaper, which means the recapture will be even longer, but the 425 is not really exactly the same tractor as a 455. So I thought that comparison was not really an honest comparison in my opinion. So we'll move on to the next comparison, but I did hope you enjoyed some of the pictures of my buddy's 455 along with my old 445 that I no longer have. So the next comparison I have is the 420 and the 430. Both of these tractors were behemoths of their time and have a pretty good following, the both of them, especially the 430. The 420 has an air-cooled gas engine, Onan, a Pose Twin with 20 horsepower. This tractor was well over 900 pounds without any deck or any other attachments. So it's a pretty beefy tractor. The 430 was a much longer tractor. It was basically the same structure, but it was longer to accommodate the radiator that they put in for the diesel engine, which was also a little bit longer. So it's a very front heavy tractor, sticks out quite a bit. It comes with the 885cc inline 3 Yanmar engine, also rated at 20 horsepower, and it actually comes in at above 1100 pounds without any attachments at all. So it, other than some four-wheel drive and all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive tractors later, it is the heaviest John Deere garden tractor that they made beyond, I think, a 748 and 749, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we'll get into these comparisons right now. So despite the 430 having the largest premium over its corresponding gas tractor contemporary, it also had the largest advantage in fuel consumption, which ended up being basically less than half of what the 420 consumed. Now, so that just comparing those items, the recapture rate for the 430 is only 4.1 years. Now, when you take into consideration that the 420 is air-cooled, doesn't have a radiator service, the filters on the 430 are going to be more expensive. And, you know, the recapture rate is going to be a little bit longer than 4.1 years, probably going to be more like five or six years. But if you keep the tractor for that long and you like to have a diesel, it's going to pay for itself. Of course, there are certainly reasons to buy a gasoline tractor over a diesel, as we kind of laid out in the other two videos. But it was interesting that that the 430 engine was so much a fuel miser and then the 420 was actually one of the highest consuming gasoline models that they were in a comparison and despite their initial cost difference which was huge the recapture rate was significantly smaller so in this last comparison, we're going to compare three tractors, and I was originally just going to compare the 322 and the 332, but I would have been leaving out America's best-selling ever garden tractor, which is the John Deere 318. So I couldn't leave it out because it was also the same tractor as the other two with a different engine. As you can see, it has an air-cooled gas 18-horse Onan, it started a slightly smaller and then in the later years they had the 781 cc engine and this tractor still has all the other things that the other tractors have that has the two hydraulic circuits it has the twin brakes it has power steering 
It has what the 332 and the 322 have as well. Then we have the 322, which is the gas version of the 332, basically the same block, very similar engine architecture, also liquid cooled, same size, 658cc, Yanmar inline three engine, so three cylinder, 18 horse. And this tractor sort of just an extra tractor because they provided obviously the gas model and a diesel model and then this is an additional gas model and this one right here is my buddy's 322 that's has I think 600 and some odd hours on it and then the next couple pictures are pictures of my 322 which are uh, a little less attractive and aesthetically pleasing because it does need some restoration on the sheet metal of the hood as you can see I got half of the hood shined up there it came out pretty good so none of its bent it's all uh, straight but um, it does need to be sandblasted and powder coated again and then of course the last tractor we're bringing to the fold here is the 332 and of course this is the diesel option which is again 658 cc engine uh, in line three, actually only rated at 16 horsepower, but I think most people that have a 332 would probably say it's ever bit as powerful as the other two tractors mentioned here as well. And I decided to throw this other pick in here from 332. Uh, the first one is my buddy's 332, and then the second one was, was one that I had seen on the internet that I think is one of the coolest looking pictures of a tractor, a lawn and garden tractor that I've ever seen on the internet, the way the 332 is done up. And I think we'll go ahead and get into the comparison at this point. In my opinion, this was the most interesting comparison because John Deere gave you two gas options versus the one diesel option. So if you decided to buy a 332 over a 322, your recapture time was only 1.3 years because the fuel difference or fuel consumption difference is so different between the two and because the entry level price of both is so similar because they are the same tractor in addition they're also about the same engine except for the diesel uses a lot less fuel. On the 318 the recapture rate was closer to a little over six years so if you bought a 332 it would take you a little over six years to recoup your cost but it would actually probably be a little bit longer than that because the simplicity of the 318's Onan uh, and cheaper filters uh, no radiator fluid those kind of things make that a better uh, option at least in the short term and so I would probably say the recapture on over a 318 would probably be seven to eight years maybe even longer who knows And one last word about the comparison that I did here was that I did use 100 hours, which is about two hours a week for the comparison. So if you were to use the tractor a lot less time than that during the year, the gas starts to look a lot more attractive. And if you use the tractor a lot more than that, then the diesel option is going to be more attractive and advantageous for you. So of course there's different reasons to use a gas or use a diesel. So obviously it's up to you. You got to figure out your own needs. The other thing is keep in mind this was a very general comparison. Okay, we were comparing liquid cooled and air cooled and carbureted and electronic fuel injection and indirect injection, diesels, gas. So we try to just kind of home in on one thing. And these figures that I have are the ones that I was able to research. So you somebody might find something different, but I thought they were reasonably accurate, so these are the ones I used. So anyway, if you've gotten this far, I appreciate you watching. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like it, you can hit the subscribe button in the upper left hand corner. And then around the other corners are the two other videos that I spoke about earlier, plus a video of your choice. And again, thanks for watching. Have a great night. Bye.